All right, I'm so stoked to be up here with you guys tonight to talk about weed, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you guys. We are going to chit-chat just a little bit about some medical cannabis, though, tonight. Uh, back in 2010, I had the honor to help co-author a house bill here in Colorado that I had hoped would help very seriously ill patients get access to medicinal cannabis while allowing for responsible rules and regulations around what I think most would consider a very misunderstood industry. However, what happened, in my opinion, were some of the most loathsome examples of the misuse of cannabis law and cannabis usage that I could have imagined. Now you guys, come on, you guys all remember this, right? This is back when that horrible, horrible epidemic of back pain just swept across college campuses. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. <laughs> People like my friend Ben here, for example, right? <laughs> yeah, he never tires of thanking me for all the work that I did so now he could enjoy the freedom of his recreational pleasure. That's not really what I do, so that got under my skin for some time because I really felt like all of the work that we did had quite literally just gone up in smoke. But, you know what? My disdain for this type of abuse didn't last that long because I realized that if it weren't for old Ben here and the back pain epidemic, none of us here tonight would have ever had the opportunity to meet a very special friend of mine, Charlotte Figgy. Yeah, you can clap. Charlotte, besides being dear to my heart, is a six-year-old. And like most little six-year-olds, <laughs> yeah, there's Chase, there's her, si her twin sister. And like, like, like most six-year-olds, Charlotte, she just loves the color pink, loves to, to go play in the woods with her twin sister, Chase, and her older brother, Max. I hear you, baby. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte's, a, she, Charlotte's an explorer, and for good reason that we're going to get into here a little bit later. She also happens to be one of the most frequent cannabis users that I know. There it is. There's the word, cannabis. And cites all kinds of different people, different things to different people. To some people, it's the devil's weed, right? Others, it's just a pseudo-medical excuse to get high. And yet others find true medicinal benefit with it. But at the end of the day, what are we talking about here? We're just talking about a plant. Okay, this is a plant that grows anywhere from three to eight feet tall, typically. About every seven to ten weeks, it'll produce a flower or a bud, as you know it. But that's it, just a plant. It even grows on six continents. But it's a plant that Charlotte Figgy uses a lot of to control her grand mal seizures. And in no uncertain terms, Charlotte's life depends on this plant. You see, Charlotte was diagnosed when she was three months old with a very, very rare and violent form of epilepsy known as Dravet syndrome. And Charlotte will experience a very high number of what we call tonic-clonic or grand mal seizures. About one every 20 to 25 minutes, guys. And these seizures, these seizures will last anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. So in essence, Charlotte's life is spent in a seizure and catatonic state. Twice, Charlotte's mother, Paige, has had to bring her back to life using CPR. At any given time, Charlotte will be on seven daily different pharmaceutical seizure medications, none of which control her seizures. When Charlotte was five years old, her seizures had reached their worst, and her medical team told the Figgy family things like, start making preparations for her death. She was probably not going to wake up from this. And the Figgies reluctantly signed a do not resuscitate order for Charlotte around this time. And she was sent home with a fitted chair, a feeding tube in her belly as she'd lost all of her life skills and the family to say their goodbyes. Now, didn't look good for Charlotte. Didn't seem like she'd pull through. But remember, thanks to my old friend Ben and that back pain epidemic, <laughs> wasn't the end for Charlotte. And the Figgies weren't about to give up hope. And they set out on a journey to find, of all people, huh, my family. Well, I come from a very, very large family, okay? I'm the oldest of 11 kids, and nope, we're not Mormon, we're not Catholic. <laughs> nope, apparently we're just incredibly fertile. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and me and my five younger brothers, amazing brothers, Joel, Jesse, Jonathan, Jordan, and Jared, and our honorary brother, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, um, we, we set out on a mission to, a very unique mission, to breed a special strain of cannabis plant, one that was essentially free of the psychoactive compound that you all know as tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, right? And one that was very, very high in the little known non-psychoactive compound called CBD, or cannabidiol. Well, we succeeded in this effort in January of 2012, and this is right around the time that the Figgies were signing their Do Not Resuscitate order, and as luck would have it, Paige Figgy found us in February of 2012. Now, my brothers and I have been reading a lot of studies, a lot of research that have been coming out of Israel from the 80s, 90s, and up to today on this, on this research. Although, uh, strangely enough, it seems like America knew about this 65 years ago. <sighs> but that's a talk for another day. My brothers and I thought that this little-known compound might just be the missing link to provide some validity in the realm of cannabis research. And as it turns out, we were correct. Now, the plant that we had created, while it may have immense medical benefits, completely non-psychoactive, okay? Completely useless to Ben. So we named the, <laughs> we named the plant the hippie's disappointment. <laughs> now, and while it didn't prove useful to Ben, it proved incredibly useful to little Charlotte. And so when Paige called us that February, told us of Charlotte's condition, we were ready to jump in. We were ready to help. In fact, we couldn't wait until Paige dropped the bomb on us. Charlotte was five years old. And think about it for a minute. We're going to give a five-year-old cannabis? <sighs> Literally, visions of, of this were popping in my head. Hmm. <laughs> But we got over this pretty quickly and we began to extract and formulate and ratio a non-psychoactive lab-tested pediatric tincture for Charlotte. And I'm happy to tell you that within the first administration, Charlotte went from having a seizure every 20 to 25 minutes, that's 400 a week, guys, down to zero to one per week. Thank you. And, and Charlotte was off 100% of her pharmaceuticals. No more pharmaceuticals. Thank you. Charlotte is now awake. She's alive. And guys, real special treat for you tonight. Ballerina! 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 I love dance. Isn't she amazing? And so we changed the name of the plant from the hippie's disappointment, and now the name is affectionately called Charlotte's Web, in honor of Charlotte. And it always will be Charlotte's Web. Now, Charlotte's not an isolated incident here. We currently treat over 40 pediatric patients here in Colorado with the same, similar, and believe it or not, even better results than what Charlotte experiences. And currently, there are over 200 families coming from all over the world to Colorado to take part in our treatment program. We're soon to move into California as well, where we literally have over 1,000 children with pediatric epilepsy and their families waiting for us. And we'll be moving to other states as soon as laws will allow us. And we have a very special young man here in the audience tonight. Where are you at, buddy? Is it Kai Jackson? There's my man. <laughs> buddy! There's the guy. What's up, Bubba? Right here. Hey, man, give me five. Zakai Jackson, our, our number two patient, right after Charlotte. Great friend of ours. Zakai, unfortunately, he suffers from a syndrome known as Doza syndrome. And before this treatment, Zakai was experiencing oh, over 200 seizures a day. Okay? I'm gonna happy to tell you guys now, on October 4th in two weeks, we're all gonna get together to celebrate Zakai's one-year seizure-free anniversary. <laughs> I 
And you know, it's very, very difficult for me as an outsider to relay what this means to families. And I wanted to Kai's mother, Heather Jackson, to tell you guys what this has meant to her. And I get to say, after almost a decade, I get to meet him for the first time without all this seizure activity and drugs. If you can imagine waiting 10 years to meet your kid. So you can see this has a positive impact on a lot of families. And so in light of that, my brothers and I started a nonprofit organization called The Realm of Caring. And The Realm helps to provide support, resources, education, physician-backed medical studies, as well as safe and affordable access to our treatment program. And currently, The Realm is in the middle of setting up study protocols with some of the country's top epileptologists in order to start getting down to the bottom of the science even further as to why this plant is working so well for these children. So why is this plant working so well? Well, cannabidiol has the highest anti-inflammatory and neuroprotectant properties found in nature. And CBD actually interacts with structures on the surface of brain cells known as receptors. And acting as that neuroprotectant and anti-inflammatory helps to decrease and, as you've seen, even eliminate seizure activity. Now, while we don't know, it seems as though CBD is actually playing a role in the repair of brain function. And research scientists and our doctors believe that this is why Charlotte, Zakai, and other children in this program are actually experiencing an ongoing progression of motor, social, and developmental skills, meaning that they're actually coming back to cognition more and more and more every day. They're getting better, guys. I mean, it, it's phenomenal. Now, I think it's also important to note here that epilepsy is not the only thing that CBD seems to be helpful for. According to some of our early studies and studies out of Israel right now, they're showing incredible results in PTSD, in migraines, depression, arthritis, cancer, and heart disease. And even further studies, believe it or not, are showing that this little known compound might have the capabilities of helping to stop progression of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, MS, and diabetes. Now, I think it's quite clear we all know very, very, very little about this plant. We've lived in the last 80 years in this country under a cloud of propaganda and fear. And we're just now, though, we're starting to wake up from that fear. We're starting to replace that fear with acceptance, understanding, and education. And what's happening? Amazing things, right? Amazing discoveries. And that's what happens whenever you're able to lay fear to rest. But we have a long way to go here. I want you all to think about something with me real quick. Charlotte is awake now, okay? After experiencing a five-year darkness and fear type nightmare. I don't know how you'd feel, but me, I'd feel like doing some exploring. I'd feel like seeing the world, getting out there. Well, imagine Charlotte feels very much the same. Yet picture this, she can't even leave the state of Colorado if she does, she faces a life and death situation without her medication. Not to mention the fact that the minute the Figgies family, when they leave the state of Colorado on a family vacation with her medicine, they become drug traffickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look like a pack of hardened criminals to me, don't they, you? <laughs> so, you know, we can joke about this and we can bring light to this because Honestly, the situation is ludicrous, people. It's ludicrous. Charlotte can't leave the state. How many other children can't get into the state to get this treatment? It's not that easy to pack your whole life up and move from wherever you are in the country or the world for that matter and just relocate to Colorado. And furthermore, they shouldn't have to. Colorado children are not different physiologically than a child who lives in a Midwestern state. And it, it hurts me to tell you this next part, but this is a reality we face all the time here. Just last week, a very special young boy in Indiana with Dravet syndrome passed away because his family couldn't get out here to get the treatment in time. And we couldn't send it to him because the law doesn't allow it. If the law allowed it, 
It's a next day air package. It's that easy. Folks, children are dying. Come on, we can do better than this as humans. We must do better than this. And I'm confident that we will do better than this. Now, just how many more Charlottes, how many more Zakais, how many more children are out there that this plant could potentially provide relief for? This begs us to ask the question, are we willing to change our national view on medicinal cannabis and trade to save a thousand more lives? How about just one more life? Well, guys, I have a very special friend here tonight who strongly believes this to be the case. And if y'all don't mind, I would love to introduce you to one of the most courageous little girls I've ever met in my life. Please welcome and meet Charlotte Figgy and her parents, Matt and Paige. Thank you. Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> I think she's fascinated with you and we're fascinated with her. <laughs> oh, we've got more. Um, thank you so much, Josh. I mean, that concludes our talk, but I wanted to ask a little bit more, maybe from the parents. I mean, how do you, um, how many other parents have you met, and is there a network of people that are in contact with the Stanley Brothers, and uh, how's that going? There are, there is a large network. Amanda and Heather are uh, running Realm of Caring, and there's a huge amount of people coming here, having to move and uproot and coming here. I can't even give you a number. We take 4,000 calls a month. Um, I think there's some parents in the crowd tonight. If you're a parent, can you say hello? There's a couple. I mean, parents, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, parents of, you know. Um, is there anything that surprised you about the treatment? Um, I mean, A, probably that it worked, but um, is there anything else that, that, that wasn't covered in the talk? It was the first treatment that we tried, and we tried everything, um, even, even diets that seemed seemingly harmless. It was the first treatment we tried that worked this well and that had, had beneficial side effects. There's not a, one negative side effect in it. It's just been beneficial. That, was, that is unheard of with epilepsy. It's just an amazing story. Um, we have a break. I, I want to meet. I wanna hang, I mean, we were hanging out with Charlotte backstage. It's just amazing to watch somebody grow, and there's a lot more... Um, parents in the audience that have been in contact with Stanley Brothers. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Josh. An amazing talk. I really want to see that Thanks online. Thanks for having thank us. You, thank you all. Come here.